Hi, this is Charlie from Path of the Bee. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a bee escape. Let's get started. So, I have the cut list here hanging on the wall. I'm going to zoom in that real quick. Okay, so here I have the cut list for the bee escape. Okay, so one of the things I decided to do with this video is to show just, you know, how to put, put one together and then also how to build a jig to, if you, if you have to make multiples of them. Okay, so here I, I went ahead and put up a cut list for uh, the assembly jig. So this is the materials that you're going to need to build the jig um, that we uh, actually assemble the bee escape with. There is another jig that I use here uh, in this video, um, and it's to cut the angles. All right, let's get going. Okay, so this is a piece of, of uh, quarter-inch paneling that I salvaged out of a, out of a shipping crate. Um, I'm going to go ahead and rip it here at 15 and a half wide. Okay, because this was uh, a shipping crate, they used some kind of a shear to cut this, nothing square. I'm going to use my cutoff saw to, to get a square edge on it, and then we'll get it cut to length. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to locate the center um, of this piece of plywood simply by uh, using a long straight edge and uh, matching up my corners here. Okay, now that I have my corners. Um, there's some pretty important things I need to do. This is where I'm going to drill my hole. Um, so we're going to need a you know, just the ones that I buy, the hole is two and an eighth inch um, around, and I happen to have a, a hole saw that's, that's that big. Um, originally, when I first tried to do this, I tried to use a drill press um, to drill this hole, and that won't work because this is 15 and a half inches wide, and the throw on a drill press is seven and a half inches, so I couldn't get quite to the center. Um, this half inch too big, so um, we'll have to go ahead and use a, a hole saw to cut that hole in there. Before I cut that hole, I need to do some layout here of where, where my pieces um, are going to end up at. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to get my uh, a bean compass here, go to the hardware store and buy you know, a chunk of dowel, and then this little, uh, little plastic bean compass thing here, a couple bucks. Um, it's, a, it's a really valuable tool for this particular job. We're going to have it set, right now I've got it set at six and a half inches. Um, I'll need to make a circle that's that big here, so we're going to write, put it right here um, in, the, in the center. And we're going to go ahead and carefully draw a circle all the way around at six and a half. Okay, so I got the six and a half circle, and, and then I need to make another one at, at four. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust my beam compass to four inches. Mark that spot in the center. We'll draw this circle on here. Okay, then what I need is I need a line that runs squarely through the center here, straight up and down. This direction. All right. And that gives me um, a spot to work from. On this outside dimension here, um, if our beam compass is set up, so if you do the four inch one first and then do your six and a half on the outside, your, your compass will be set up correctly. So we're going to have to readjust it here. I want it to come out and exactly touch um, the outside circle there that I drew. It's important that this is the exact same size. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start here at this point that I made at the top. This is going to be the top of the triangle in the bee escape right here. I'm going to make a mark where that crosses. I'm going to put the point where that crosses, and I'm going to go all the way around here without changing any adjustment in the beam compass. That will give me six marks that are equal all the way around my... Uh, my project here, what I could do now is I could go ahead and draw from here to here 
Um, this would give me a line. This would give me a line here. This one will give me a line here. Okay, and then I'll show you how to build the jig, and we'll do a lot of the similar work to build the jig, but it'll be one shot through, and when we're done with it, we won't have to keep measuring triangles and circles and hexagons um, when we're done. So, okay, so here's the jig that I made um, to cut these angles in these uh, half by three quarter sticks. And so what I did was I, uh, I glued a piece of hardwood here, um, a little three quarter wide strip um, that's just really pretty thin. I, I like hardwood because it doesn't wear out, and it fits right in the in the miter groove in my table saw. So how I built this jig was. Uh, was I just took a, a 3060 triangle and if you don't have a 3060 triangle you just saw me draw uh, a circle um, with a with a compass and you can do that with a string and a nail and a pencil and you're gonna get those you're gonna get those three points that I drew lines through you cut that out of a piece of cardboard and then fold that exactly in half and slice it and this is what you'll have you can make your own really simply um, it's basic it's really a bit super simple math but that's the angle here that we need to cut our little pieces. You got 120 degrees or 60 degrees, however you want to slice it, depending on where you're measuring from. Um, and so I drew a line on there, and then I, I lightly nailed a, another uh, stick on here, the half inch thick material, and then cut it off. And so now I have um, the proper piece. From here to here is 11 inches to the stop. So this will make, as I make one pass through here, this will make my 11 inch piece. Okay, so to cut our shorter piece, we use this little stop spacer block. It's cut a four and a quarter inches long, so that'll give us our six and three quarter inch long piece as we saw it off here. All right, flip it around, we'll cut the other end. All right, there we go. If you guys have questions on this jig and need a little bit more better explanation about it, let me know in the comments. I'll go ahead and take time to put together a three or four or five minute video of, of exactly how to build that. So we need three pieces this size and three pieces this size for our B escape. I'll, I'll get them made up. Okay, now I need a few pieces that are uh, half inch by three eighths um, for some spacers. Okay, so these pieces are, are not on the cut list. They're actually part of the jig um, and their length is not super duper critical. Um, it is kind of Relatively important. I'm going to just cut this in half. And I'll show you how they work. From this point to this point, I need a line coming out of there so that I can know where my piece goes. And then to this point, I need from the center to the point. And then from here, I need, got it there already. Okay, so good. How this works is now these are 3 eighths by half inch. I'm going to stand the half inch so the three-eighths is the B space. Um, I'm going to put that in here right on top of that line centered on the line. One there's going to be centered on the line and one there's centered on the line. These are just sitting here to keep things in, in the proper spot. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bring in my, my angled pieces and uh, this point and this point should match on my circle. On the short ones should match on the inner circle. Okay, and uh, so here should match on the inner circle. All right, then we're going to start adding the big ones, and they should match up the outer circle. Okay, and if you're only doing one off on these, go ahead put some glue on here and. Uh, maybe a staple or two or something and then once you got it all stuck down you know you're good to go I don't like you know because this quarter inch material and this is half inch the state as far as I'm concerned the staple should come from the underneath side up and into this piece so if you're making multiple ones of them I'm building the jig to let us like set this up and staple from the opposite side so go ahead and uh, these come out they're just there to get your spacing. That's going to be your that's going to be your deal there. I'll go ahead and get a, a hole saw and we'll drill this hole in here. 
Okay, so I've centered this over the table where I've got some relief underneath it here. I can get my hole saw in here. Uh, two and an eighth inch hole. And I want it centered up right on my, right on my, where X marks the spot. Okay, so once again, if we're just doing a one-off, we can use our, our three-eighths by half-inch shims here. Half-inch standing up, three-eighths wide, right on these lines that we drew. And then, uh, then we go ahead and, and uh, space the center pieces out to the circle and the bigger pieces out to the outer circle and go around there. You could use a three-quarter nail, um, tack them down with some glue. It's going to work great and then we'll cover it up with hardware cloth. Um, I like to use uh, eighth inch um, mesh hardware cloth. My thing is this, is that if I'm going to make one of them, I'm going to make ten and that's a lot of hard work so what I decided to do was uh, build a jig. And so how this jig is, is uh, if you can see if I have my pieces in here, that's going to sit exactly on top of that and then I'll be able to staple through the paneling into the into the arrowed pieces so here's my here's my uh, little pieces here they're gonna fit right inside and they're gonna fit snugly now once there's a border on this once I have the outside pieces cut and put on that that will fit on here and that lip will like orient that to where that's perfect around the outside and then I could staple through the other part of my jig which is this. And it'll fit right inside that border. And I can staple through these holes. All right, let's go ahead and get build the border and get this piece uh, ready to rock and roll. Okay, so on the 16 and a quarter pieces, we need to put a um, 3 quarter by 3 eighths rabbit in the end, uh, each end of, of them. So we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my blade up here. Um, plow groove into, into all four of these pieces, um, that's a quarter inch, and then uh, we're going to set this depth for three-eighths of an inch. Okay, so what I need is, is I need this to be um, 11 sixteenths. Okay, that looks good. Lock down, um, and so that'll lead like a quarter of an inch on the inside there. Yep, exactly that. So here we go. I'll go ahead and uh, and we'll, we'll go ahead and gro groove all of these. How I made this cardboard cutout was I sawed this piece of cardboard out to dimension, same as the bottom board on my jig, which was uh, 14 and a quarter by 18 and 3 eighths. So once this piece was set up like this, um, what I did was is I, I, I found a, a piece of, big piece of paper with a straight edge on it, and I held it. Um, at exact location, corners and straight on my on my project here, and then I grabbed a pencil and used the edge of the lead to uh, to locate by pressure um, where my pieces were at. Um, this is the picture that I got, and I just like I said, I held it on there perfectly as I as I got those lines, and then I transferred that. I transferred that to my piece of cardboard. And how I transferred it to the cardboard was I had the cardboard laying on the table and I held this on there exactly perfectly uh, where it was indexed and lined up where it was supposed to. And I took a sharp point of a pencil and at each one of these points I poked through into the cardboard. And that left me marks then that I could use a straight edge and draw all these lines and then just a razor knife and cut the, cut the openings in it. So that's how I built the cardboard part of, of the jig. Then the question is, is that where do, where do we locate these, these pieces here? So what I did was I, uh, I, I first placed um, these pieces here, these center pieces, and I got some little three-quarter brad nails and, and I nailed them down um, to where they wouldn't move. So then I was maintaining my V-space. Then I put my pieces in exactly where I wanted them, according to that. Then I held a little backup piece of this material behind it and nailed it down. Then I did the same thing for the large piece. Um, on the back side of that, I put that little piece there and nailed it in. That was basically how I built the jig. 
Same layout as we did when we originally um, drew the layout for for the board itself. So I'll go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and staple these corners on and uh, show you how this jig works. We're going to go ahead and just co finish completely assembling this. Okay, so I got this laid together. I got it set on a table, keep it kind of flat, and uh, I'm going to grab my uh, staple gun here, and I'm just going to put a staple in the ends here, make sure everything's lined up. Okay, so we got all stapled together there, um, looking good, and uh, we've got our jig, jig set up here. Now I'm just going to set this right on top of that and look through there. See that that hole's lined up in the center of the one that we cut. Now as we go along, we don't have to draw all these lines on. We can just make these boards like this. Here's my top, my top jig. I'm going to lay it right on there. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and staple. Oh, no staple there. There we got it. Okay, so that's all nailed on. And I can just lift this off of here. And... Things it's on there, beautiful. All right. Now we're gonna get some hardware cloth, and we'll cut that up, and uh, away we go. And you can draw on this hardware cloth with a sharpie if you just drag it along there. It, it leaves pretty good, a pretty good mark. Okay. And then I'm gonna use my 3060 triangle. I'm gonna lay that on here. Um, use that for a square. And I come up to where I have a point. Okay. So from from the bottom to the top here is 10 inches. Now here I have some industrial scissors and uh, it's probably not the right tool to use to cut this hardware cloth but it works pretty good and so that's just what I'm going to use. Um, it gets pretty sharp and pokey so please be careful. Now I have a piece of hardware cloth cut and I can just lay this on here and, uh, and staple it down. A regular staple gun and some half inch staples, 3 8 staples. I believe these are 3 8 Okay, you want to staple near the entrances here. Um, keep this hardware cloth flat. You don't want it riding up so that they get some weird spacing in there. Okay, and there we have a B-Escape. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.